Right, so stocks stopped, uh, kind of ended or halted their slide that they've been on over the last week or so, uh, as much of a slide as it was, and it, and it's not necessarily ending. At least it's not It didn't continue today, as we finally had a relatively decent move uh, to the upside. Relatively, of course, uh, probably going to continue to extend that. We'll talk about why and and you know what what the charts look like there. Um, there was some pretty interesting breakout moves in, in some specific asset classes. So I'm going to break out what those outliers were, uh, what those different asset classes were. But, but we're going to take, you know, we, we'll talk about the sideways trend that we see going on. Basically, the non-trending moves we see across different asset classes uh, going here, which really limits like any breakout potential uh, that the market stocks, uh, specifically some of these indexes may be having especially when you see the weakness in the Dow and, and you know, again, relative weakness uh, in the Russell 2000 that we've been having here lately. And for that matter, the relative weakness we've been having in like Apple and Facebook over the past week, uh, two of the biggest companies out there. It's kind of hard for the broader market to be breaking out when two of its big movers and shakers aren't participating, at least to the same degree. So we'll talk about that. Uh, and our trade idea is a stock that did break out. Um, so no, nice little bullish pattern and uh, with some limiting factors of what might be limiting its upside. So we'll talk about the stock and its breakout and how to trade it with those limiting factors. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Wednesday, uh, September the 15th, 2021. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right. Well, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 with the Market Forecast Indicator. As you'll notice here, uh, we are back up above the 30-day moving average, so we're back to a green line uh, after briefly being yellow a couple of times. Um, the short-term sentiment now is is much improved. It's it's you know we talked about the near-term line being in the lower reversal zone for quite some time, more longer than is typical for bullish trends. You can see when you're below 20, uh, you're only usually down there for like a day. Uh, when you and you're only really down below 40 for a couple of days, uh, maybe three at the most. Uh, but then you're back up. Well, we were below 40 for quite a while and below 20 for multiple days, three days here, before rallying up uh, today and getting out of bearish territory. Now the question is, where will we wind up uh, when we get into bullish territory? And that's the million dollar question, right? And so I expect that we'll get up above the short term sentiment line. We'll get up above 60. I don't think necessarily that it will make a, an extended run above 80, which is what we've seen typically coming off of these um, by the dip pattern, right, where we make a strong run with a strong near-term rally up above 80. I think we'll probably get up to 60, maybe get up towards 80, maybe dip a toe above it, um, but um, but kind of then pull back down and not spend a, a normal length 7, 12-day window uh, in bullish territory up above 60. That's what I'm expecting for the blue line. The red line, of course, is more volatile up and down, but it's been pretty bearish for quite a while too, again, which is not typical for bullish trends, uh, even pullbacks on bullish trends, right? Even these pullbacks, you can see, uh, not down below 40 uh, for very long before bouncing up. And we've been below 40 for quite a while with only just a little pop up briefly there. I mean, we were below 40 this whole entire time, essentially. Uh, market sentiment still very strongly bullish. It's above 80. Uh, you can see the intermediate lines neutral. Uh, again, it's not the first time we've come out of bullish territory. It's actually the third time. Uh, that we've come out of bullish territory and you can see even over there the near term on those dips these two dips here the near term line just barely got below 20 and bounced right back up and the momentum line was up and down up and down up and down but didn't stay down um, but this case it did so this kind of makes this little pullback more unique uh, than these other two um, that were associated with uh, intermediate declines on the nasdaq 100. Uh, so we're not below 50, we're just below 60, so we'll see where we end up. We got, we're got we back above the moving average. We weren't very far below it, now we're back up above it by 0.2%. Uh, Let's take a look at the Dow. That's the one that actually is on an intermediate decline. Even with the rally, uh, its short-term sentiment is still relatively bearish, um, and we're still well below the moving average. Um, dark pink shading. We got back above this 38% retracement, but not above that. Uh, not back up above the 23% retracement yet, which um, you know ends the retracement uh, when you get back up above that level. And of course, your intermediate posture is not only in bearish territory, but it's in the lower reversal zone. 
So it's, you know, again, we're, we are on, even though we, we haven't pulled below the 23% line of this longer term ho post Halloween move, uh, that pretty much everything has been on the S&P, especially, uh, it is, um, you know, you know, obviously we, we did have a pullback on the Dow there. So that's why the red lines are drawn to give this kind of shorter time frame look at this. And so we are back up above that 38%. And, and we'll see if, you know, what we end up doing. See, this is more bearish on the intermediate line than what we even saw back uh, in June, in late June. Now, let's take a look at the Russell. The Russell, of course, is all, it has recently, uh, at the beginning of July, had its own intermediate decline uh, that ended in an oversold cluster, and we rallied out of it. Um, very temporary, right? Like, we were neutral for a while, uh, and, then, and then flirted again with being in bearish territory before making a run up in the bullish, but that sense has now ended. So we're, you know, the Russell really can't break out uh, one way or the other, right? It can't, it's not breaking to the downside. And, and there's, as I tweeted out last night, there's not very much volume support down here, but it's also not really breaking out to the upside either. So short-term sentiments pointing higher on all these indexes. So I expect that we'll probably finish th tomorrow and Friday on the upside, probably not again, new highs on any of these indexes, but but you know some ups and downs intraday before we finish higher um, over the next couple of days is my expectation uh, as we head into the end of the week. Again, that's seasonally the time of you know, that's seasonally the pattern that you get going into this time of year. Uh, or this, excuse me, this particular week you can see it typically is bullish uh, going into um, uh, the early part of next week. The seventeenth is the end of this week, so that'd be right there and then of course you can see going into the 21st uh, but then we really kind of falter at that point whether it's the Russell 2000 uh, whether it's the Nasdaq which kind of peaks there on the 17th which is the end of this week uh, whether it's the S&P 500 which peaks here um, right there looks like on the 20th so the day on you know, this next Monday and then a little bit little down move on the 22nd 21st um, before getting its period of weakness. So, you know, if I were to zoom out and uh, just kind of look at the last 10 years, or zoom in, excuse me, look at the last 10 years, uh, you can see a more pronounced peak there on the 17th. That would be this Friday. Uh, and if I go out um, five years, you can see, you know, we actually peak here on the 7th, but that would be aligning with the peak that we just had. So uh, going all the way to the beginning of November. Uh, again, you can see the beginning of November whether it's five years or 10 years, you can see a little dip there, or 20 years, you can see that's about the time that we really get going to the upside. Um, so, you know, that's the kind of we like, you know, it's normal to be bullish this week and it's normal to be bull, uh, not so bullish next week. So uh, that's kind of, the, it seems like that's how we're playing out considering uh, the near term lines and how they're pointed the rest of this week and, and then ultimately you know, how bullish we'll actually be by the end of the week. And if we're not very strongly bullish, then more than likely we'll turn into some more weakness next week, according to seasonal trends. So uh, let's take a look at the long-term view of the chart. And of course, you know, this is the first time we've had a, a bearish candle for a while, but we don't have the red arrow. So we're not, um, you know, in intermediate decline. We've had bearish candles before, you know, again, aligning with the near term, uh, the intermediate declines on the NASDAQ, uh, not quite on the S&P. Uh, this is about as bearish as we got last time, so we'll just kind of keep our eyes on that. Uh, that is the S&P. Of course, the Dow has shown um, a negative candle, a negative Hakanyashi candle for a couple of weeks now, and the um, red arrow. So, you know, again, it is an intermediate uh, pullback mode. Uh, let's take a look at the three green arrow chart. As you see, we have um, a green arrow on the S&P and the Russell, so that takes away the pink shading. The Nasdaq never did get the pink shading, it's just got the uh, two red arrows, like, like all the indexes now, uh, and then, except for the Dow. The Dow still has three red arrows. It hasn't produced um, the green arrow on the moving average yet, uh, and you can see the MACD and stochastics are still uh, relatively bearish. In fact, the stochastics for the diamonds are lower than all the rest. All the rest would give us phantom green arrows like these green arrows that turn up without being oversold uh, the Russell got a couple oversold green arrows and that's what we would be getting right now with the Dow we haven't had that since uh, again like I it said it's only an immediate decline it had back in June 
see these light pink shadings just bounce right back up. It's the light pink shadings that don't bounce right back up that turn into something more uh, from an exhale standpoint. Let's take a look at the two green line, uh, two line versions of this chart. You can see we bounce right back up above off of that 50 day moving average where again I tweeted out last night there's a lot of volume support down below this. But you also see we also closed back above the 8 and the 17 day moving averages. So that mean the, that made the MACD turn up slightly. The histograms obviously turned up. We had pretty decent volume here. Um, so that's a good bullish bounce back uh, for the S&P 500. The diamonds, of course, had a little bit of a bounce back, but not nearly as bullish as it's still actually below its 8 day moving average and now has all that resistance above it. Um, but, but after a couple drops, and remember we've been below the 50 now, We've, we've been below the 50 and now we've extended that stay below the 50 and now in fact not only has price dropped below it and the 8 day exponential moving average dropped below it but so has the 17 days so that's a little different than all these other declines uh, that we've got um, below the 50 day moving average. Now over here we did get both those lines over and we rallied back up and then back above the 17 day right there above the 8 and the 17 day and then back above the 30 and the 50 the next day and we, were, we maintained the bullishness. So that's something to keep an eye on here as to how we bounce up. Otherwise, you expect that we continue to trade in this area uh, between the 50 and the 200-day moving averages. IWM had broken back below its 50-day moving average. Um, in fact, it broke below all those lines yesterday. Uh, it's very close to its 200-day moving average. Um, and you can see we bounced back above the 8, um, but not above any of the others. So again, it goes to show on both of these, both the Dow and the Russell are both below their um, point of control. So again, that puts pressure. It doesn't necessarily mean we can't go up. It just means it's going to be hard to go up uh, with strong moves with all that pressure sitting up on top. Not impossible because nothing's ever zero or 100 percent, but it is a strong uh, potential. It is strong. It's harder uh, to make that kind of move. Like make a look at the take a look. Excuse me at the DMI, and you can see we just have no trend at all going on. The ADX still is very low, below 15. The positive index is, is way low too. It's the lowest it's been in a long time since that bottom. But when we are at that low point and that low point over here, very similar levels to where we're at right now, uh, the negative in the index was very high on both of those. The negative index is not very high. In fact, it's dropping. So we have literally no trend going on. Uh, the diamonds, uh, look at that oversold negative, a positive indicator. So again, that hasn't happened. Uh, in a very very long time. In fact, the last time it happened was a COVID low point. You can see how bearish the negative index was. Before that, you can also again see how ne negative the bearish index was. Um, you know that. So the last five years, those are the only other times a positive indicator has gotten that bearish, and yet um, we are not. The negative indicator is not that uh, bear. Uh, it's not that high. So. You know, again, it's really interesting, and the reason, the idea here is, you know, we are gapping up and then falling down rather than just pushing lower every single day, um, and so that's that's pushing the positive indicator down, but it's not bearish enough to push this up, right? So it's two different sides of a coin there that we have to pay attention to. Of course, when you look at IWM, you know, again, very similar as the S&P. Uh, very uh, negative positive in index, but not really that bearish of a negative uh, indicator there. Uh, you look at the Ichimoku trend cloud. I talked about the trend is gone on the S&P 500, and that's the case. It was a very strong trend, and it literally is gone, according to these two indicators. Dropped to zero yesterday, and then today we bounced back up, but we're still below one. We're still below 50, so... Uh, and again, coming off of a positive, you expect maybe a bounce up to a to weak trends, but not you know a bounce right back up to positive trends. So it's kind of hard to get going uh, once you've halted what was a very strong trend, as you can see here on the Qs. Same thing. Uh, IWM is again not showing a trend at all. No trend at all. A very flat cloud, and we're trading right around the cloud. In fact, we traversed the cloud from below it to above it all in one day today and then you can see your diamonds which have been flirting with being with as close to a positive a weak negative trend as you could get now is is you know on the flip side of that of those lines uh, one for the trend quality indicator and 50 for the trend noise balance so again no trends whatsoever going on 
uh, on any of these indexes. Spiders, you can see we're smack dab in the middle of the bandwidth. The bandwidth is uh, relatively low uh, compared to its past precedent. The uh, diamonds are in the uh, lower half of you know this. You know the, we're in the the second quartile there, so we're out of the lower quartile again. On uh, IWM, you can see smack dab in the middle, so right around its point of control. You know there's just no breakout move uh, going on. You can see that as well in the RSI and the CCI. I mean, we are between 40 and 60 on the on the RSI for SBX. We're back above negative 100 there. We didn't really dip too far. Uh, the Russell 2000, same thing, and then um, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, we are back up above 40, so we're back to the lower end of the neutral zone, but still pretty neutral. The Dow did get this breakout signal, so that's that's why it is more bearish, and it actually is on an intermediate pullback, um, but you know, again, not that bearish according to these oscillators. Let's take a look at today's intraday move um, here. Uh, you can see, you know, the nice good move that we had to the upside up to the four week point of control. Um, I think we'll probably stay around here, maybe up and down a little bit, um, but stay around here going into um, 450 is a nice round number that the market might be pending for um, by the time we finish uh, expiration week. So we'll keep that um, keep that number in mind. Uh, if you look at the diamonds, you can see, you know, it's finally gotten. But, but if you notice again, an inside day on the diamonds. An inside day on the spiders, uh, and then IWM, an inside day there. So, you know, it's not a bearish candle. It's not really a bullish candle by itself, right? We have to follow through this inside day with a higher high and a higher low, and closing above today's high. You know, that would tr that would change what was some bearish candles going back into a bullish, even if it's just a short-term bullish trend. If you take a look at today's volume. Uh, in trading range, you can see our trading range was almost five points, so a little bit above the average. The volume, 78 and a half million shares trading hands. So when I put that, those numbers into context, all right. So uh, five points is up here. It's still that's not a bearish number, right? That's a, I mean, excuse me, not a bullish number. A bullish number is back towards four points, three, three and a half to four points. So five points is actually a bearish number because it keeps this line moving up. Uh, 78 million shares trading is actually a bearish number because it keeps the line moving up even though we finished higher. So we're not out of the woods here. Like we, we would prefer to be back to 60 million um, in volume, three to half to four points in ranges, you know, or to have like, you know, 100 plus million in volume, like 115 million with an eight point range, so extreme that you just bounce right off of it. Um, but we're not so extreme that we just bounce right off of it. We are, but we are high enough to keep these averages moving up, which is you know bearish uh, direction, uh, so that's you know that's why I say like we might be a little positive on the near term basis going into the end of the week. I don't think we'll maintain that going uh, after expiration. Let's take a look at uh, volatility. Uh, you can see it's pulled back. I said before that I don't expect it will get back to 80%. So we'll see. I think we'll kind of go up and down around this 85 over the next couple of days. So trading just underneath 20. Uh, it'll be easier to make a run up towards 100, 105, which would signal an intermediate decline. Um, it'll be easier for that to happen from this level than it would be from extreme lows. So we got to come off the extremes and then kind of muddle around up here at higher levels uh, that can serve as a, d a different launching point uh, for volatility. And one thing I've been kind of keeping an eye on with volatility is uh, the fact that it did get back below you know, it got above, it closed above its 200 day moving average, um, but like all these other instances, came right back down below it the next day. So again, kind of shows that this, you know, this is not the spike, uh, that we're gonna probably get back below the 15 to 30 day moving averages by the time the week is over. It's probably around 17-ish. Um, but then, you know, this watch for, for it to get above the 200 and then stay there for more than just a couple of days, right? The day it breaks and then the next day, you know, so, um, that's kind of an important level to watch for um, the VIX. In fact, we might not even get a negative MACD again um, before we pop back up um, potentially again next Monday going in or, you know, or the couple of days after that, according to the traditional seasonality. You can see from a, again, seasonality standpoint, volatility typically drops, it looks like, to the 22nd. So, so it looks like, you know, again, maybe into next Tuesday before 
we get a, a seasonal move to the upside uh, to mid-October of a pretty decent run. That's a pretty decent run in volatility all the way to, and then staying, you know, after a down and back up, getting staying up there until the beginning of November where volatility falls uh, typically through the rest of the year. So those are my expectations uh, from a technical perspective uh, for the markets. Um, now, uh, going, you know, for the next couple of days, finishing off September expiration, and then post, which is very important. I think we'll just grind our way. And the best case scenario is we continue to grind our way after. There's not, we're not breaking out to the upside either, right? Even if we're not breaking down, we're not breaking out to the upside either. And I don't expect that to be the case. We are definitely not in parabolic mode like we were at the end of 2017 going into the beginning of 2018. We're definitely not in that mode here. We're not in breakout mode, we're not in parabolic mode. We are in grind mode because the market's still you know, kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop, so to speak, to see whether or not uh, we can stay bullish and not to worry about things uh, despite you know the, the higher valuations or uh, whether you know the, the reason why people have been buying you know these out of money puts for so long, um, you know that, that reason plays out. So I expect again slow grind, uh, slow grind into expiration, out of expiration as the high as the uh, best case scenario. I think that's a lower probability. I think the higher probability coming out of expiration is that we will now start to get some more volatility and we'll grind our way up. I mean, again, not probably not going to fall off a cliff. I highly doubt we'll fall off a cliff, um, but we'll get you know some uncomfortable volatility because there's so many weak hands in the markets right now. Um, you know, it's going to make people fret. Um, but, you know, considering you're 100% off of March COVID low, um, any fretting over a 5% drop or a 10% drop would be, would kind of show just how weak the hands are. Um, you know, there's absolutely no reason to fret about a 10% decline following a 100% rally. So what do you think? Do you agree with that? Disagree? Let me know in the comments section, especially, uh, especially if you disagree. Uh, what charts or indicators are you looking at um, that suggests why you're either a lot more bullish than I am or a lot more bearish than I am. Share with us those, those indicators or charts that you're watching in the comment section below. All right, before we look at some other charts, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mouse over this icon here in the bottom right corner of your screen. Hit the red subscribe button that pops out. There's also one down below the video if you're watching us on YouTube. That notifies you when our videos are posted. Also, while you're down there, hit that thumbs up icon. That tells us you liked our video today and you want us to do another video again tomorrow. Um, also comment, what did you get out of our videos today? Uh, put, put that in the comment section below. Join our website at marketscholars.com. There's a link popping out there in the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link to subscribe to our site for free. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos from day to day. My handle right there, at DavidSettle42. And join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. If you're watching us on our blog, come over here and click on this icon. It takes you to our Market Outlook Live page. You can see today's Market Outlook Live here and all the archives uh, underneath. Uh, this is where I post, um, I take a look at trades that we've put on in previous Market Outlook videos. Uh, we also, you know, in fact, we closed out a couple today, uh, a couple more, and I also put on the new trade already before the market closed today, the one that you will talk about at the end of the video. So I do that here, and like I said, you can check out old archives down here at the bottom. Uh, if you click the uh, back button, uh, also you can see all of our upcoming events. If you click on this view more or, or up here on trading rooms, it takes you to our calendar with all of our upcoming classes that we have here. Um, come down here on the bottom, click on this heart. It opens up a new tab. Uh, hit that like button right there. Come over here and click on this thumbs up icon. opens up another new tab. I hit that like button as well. Again, the more you do that, it really helps us get our content out to all of our followers uh, because of how these algorithms on these platforms work. Uh, the more engagements the, the posts have, the more people who actually follow our page see it. Um, it also benefits you because Twitter and Facebook promote content in your timelines from the accounts that you engage with the most. So we try to make it really easy for you to engage with us right here. All right, now let's take a look at what's uh, drove, driving price here today. Uh, let's come to just today alone. This is our three-month chart. Look at bonds and the Qs uh, still with your best three-month three uh, performance here. Uh, let's go down here to September and again, just look at today alone. And you can see commodities really broke out right from the get-go on the day. In fact, they actually gave back some of their gains today while everything else rallied. Uh, small cap stocks rallied, the Qs rallied, the S&P, I mean, everything rallied. Real estate was doing well until the end of the day. 
Uh, and then you can see all your risk asset classes, uh, or excuse me, safe haven asset classes, gold and bonds and the dollar underperforming. Emerging markets struggled despite the uh, weakness in the dollar, despite the strength in commodities, emerging markets really fell back, which is kind of, you know, those, there's a pretty strong relationship between uh, the dollar and commodities and emerging markets. So it's kind of interesting to see now it did rally uh, off of the lows of the day, but still a uh, relatively weak day uh, for uh, international stocks just in general, all, all out underperforming um, the U.S. stock market. Let's take a look at some of these charts uh, for these different asset classes. We'll look at the dollar first, uh, and you can see how uh, we had, you know, the the we had a rare gray gray bar. That's when your intermediate line is the same value from one day to the next. It's very rare for that to happen, um, but we did. We got that, and you can see we're pretty much right at 60. Um, we had pulled back after hitting resistance. The dollar had rallied. The dollar uh, again bounced or. Gain, losing ground, but not very much. I mean, that's hardly a big move to the upside. Uh, the near-term line is not peaking, you know, up above 80. It's it's still in the neutral zone itself. The intermediate line, for all that, you know, for all intents and purposes, is also in the neutral zone. So the dollar is really not making a move. Uh, Long-term bonds, as we mentioned before, the intermediate line is above 60, but I mean, it doesn't look like we're breaking out here at all. Uh, the near-term line is not getting above 80. Uh, so it's pretty relatively neutral. You can see it seems like we kind of peaked here. I expect we'll come back down a little bit uh, from a safety standpoint. And if you take a look at gold prices, it's also pretty flat. I mean, again, slightly positive on the intermediate line, but still about as flat as you can be. In fact, when you look at like the um, Ichimoku cloud and these trend strength indicators, you look at long-term bonds, there's no trend, very noisy. You look at gold, there's no trend, very noisy. You look at the dollar, no trend on the euro, uh, very noisy. If anything, it's been bearish, but it's not nearly as strongly bearish as it was. We've been sideways ever since, kind of a uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern developing there. Uh, look at Bitcoin, which had been so bullish, right? You know, a bearish move and then a really bullish move, and then now no trend. Um, there just really is no trend. Commodities are coming back, right? They, if, if anything's got a trend, commodities kind of broke out today. Uh, to the upside, you can see, you know, not quite the two, but we are above 65, so that signifies at least a, a intermediate uh, type trend. If you look at crude oil, you know, a lot of that move in commodities is crude oil. It is above two. It is above 65. We did break out, uh, so crude oil is kind of breaking out to the upside. A lot of people have suggested that's really helping energy stocks uh, make a move, but energy stocks, I mean, that's hardly a breakout move on energy. Still below the cloud. Still still very noisy. I mean, it's not bearish anymore. Uh, the bearish trend is done, but we are hardly breaking out. Like we're, we're not breaking through those highs right there. We're, we're at those highs, but not not quite the breakout pattern that a lot of people think it is. Um, so, you know, there's, there's not a lot of trends going in either direction. Um, let's see here. Let's go to, yeah, this chart here. Not a whole lot of trends going in either direction for any of these. I mean, uh, like I said, crude oil is really the only one that's got like dark pink green shading and a green line. Uh, bonds have that too, but it's sideways. Bitcoin is sideways and copper is sideways. Silver is bearish, but not as bearish as it has been. Um, you can see the 10 year yield is sideways and international stocks and gold, everything is sideways, uh, the dollar here too. So we are in a sideways pattern. Uh, we had been trending in different directions on all these different asset classes, but now none of it's trending, and you can see really neither is the S&P 500 for that matter. Let's take a look at the sector performance and how uh, the sectors have done. Uh, so let me come down here to uh, this chart. We'll look at the comparison chart and just look at today again alone and see what's driving that price action today. Uh, again, commodities was your big breakout. It was crude oil that had to break out, and energy had a big, I mean, again, but but you saw the context of that move, right? So if I were to come over here to, as big as that looks, if I were to come over here to the two line versions of the uh, MACD and Stochastics, like, yeah, I mean, that was a nice uh, move up above the point of control. Uh, not quite clearing it, but above the point of control, above the 50-day moving average. We have been trading in between the 50 and the 200-day moving average, so it looks like we might 
be popping out there. There's an opportunity for us to break out. We're back above that 23% retracement level. It looks like we're trying to get above this point of control. So let's see if it holds this tomorrow. If it does, great. If it follows through on this, great. We got a breakout. If it doesn't and we come right back down, then we know it's more of a fake out. And those kind of occur. I mean, shoot, we just had a fake out uh, dip below the two below the 200 day moving average. Here's a fake out dip below the 50 day moving average. So it needs to, you know, hold this breakout to the upside uh, and really solidify that. So it looks good. Um, but even then, again, it doesn't look like, you know, like when you look at this chart, it doesn't look like that big of a deal. When you look at it on this chart, then it looks like, oh man, that was a tremendous, in fact, we've had two really tremendous moves to the upside. Not really a whole lot of bearish moves here um, to really like support that. So it's actually kind of, you know, a little bearish that we're getting that much of a move to the upside without um, bearish moves to the downside. That really means, I mean, you would think that we were over here uh, getting these big strong bearish moves and now getting strong bullish moves to get us going. So we'll see uh, if that ends up being the case. If you look at like the the Keltner channels uh, and the Bollinger Bands, we are almost, we're just a little bit above the upper Bollinger Band. We're not out of the Keltner channels yet. So again, you know, that's why I say like, we're, we're almost there for a breakout mold, but not really quite there yet. Um, very close. All right, so for our trade idea of the day, I wanted to take a look at CF. Uh, CF Industries had a nice little breakout pattern. Uh, why are we on such a, there we go. Nice little breakout pattern, up 5.5% above its moving average. That's the biggest it's been above there for quite a while. You can see when we hit 5.5% over here, that kind of started that little run that we had, uh, that intermediate run. We we are above 50, so we got the, uh, actually, we're just barely, we're at 49.84. We were above 50 during the Market Outlook Live video. So we had dark green shading. We had a green line. You can see the nice breakout above a bunch of highs here. Uh, near term line is not quite you know where we want it to be so that's a, a limiting factor as you'll see how we handle limiting factors here in just a minute uh, if you take a look at the uh, long term chart here uh, the weekly chart you can see uh, we have been pulling back we actually were uh, flirting with the 200 day moving average but then now we're back above both the 200 and the 50 day moving average averages ppo is turning back up again we got the green arrow and a positive hakanyashi candle with the biggest one we've seen in a while a uh, positive hakanyashi candle there if you take a look at the uh, three green arrow chart uh, for cf uh, you can see we have green shading uh, we have three green arrows uh, and this time with with a pretty decent amount of volume in fact before it was kind of just barely above average and now we actually did hit one and a half times uh, the average or really close to one and a half times the average so nice good spike in volume here <coughs> if you take a look at the uh, macd and stochastics you can see how we got back above the 50-day moving average there after being below the 200 for a while and really close to a, a death cross with a 50 crossing below the 200 but closing well up above the 50 and the 200 uh, the 8-day and 17-day turning positive you can see the macd is turning positive um, big big breakout type pattern on some of the indicators but not all of them if you look at the DMI you know that we the negative indicator fell below 20 but we're not above third not even close to being above 30 on the positive indicator uh, so that's a limiting factor if you look at the RSI and the CCI we did break well above 200 we got above 60 so a nice little breakout pattern there if you look at the trend strength indicators uh, we are not even above 50 on the uh, trend noise balance and we're just barely uh, inside the cloud much less being above it so again another limiting factor from that perspective uh, from a Bollinger Band standpoint uh, we did break above the upper band so nice little breakout above the upper band there uh, if we take a look at the uh, at the squeeze pattern you can see um, that we broke above the upper bands pretty easily and we also broke above the Keltner channel so nice good breakout pattern there in fact that actually didn't happen before um, when we did the market outlook so that actually Market Outlook, Live, market Outlook Live, excuse me. Uh, so that actually occurred at the very, very end of the day there. So pretty bullish pattern uh, from that perspective too. So we want to do a bullish trade, but we're not as bullish because of the limiting factors as we saw there. Uh, so what we decided to do was to sell a put spread, selling the 47.5, buying the 45. Uh, position sizing for a full contract because um, we don't have to worry about earnings. It is a relatively wide spread, so you do have to keep in mind uh, where you might get filled in we got filled in at 70 cents there 
Um, and you can kind of see where we're at and, and how far we need to stay above that 47 and a half. There's where our break even is. If you look at it on the intraday chart of where that break even is, uh, there's our breakout to a new high. So a good bullish Arun breakout here, right? When you look at the Arun uh, indicator, that's a good bullish breakout uh, on that indicator. So uh, exactly what we like to see uh, for a bullish move. And there's our break even. So we essentially have to get back down um, below these levels and fill in that gap. And I, I would venture to guess that that is a, um, after being uh, in sideways action for so long, that you know that we you know we had some good bullish um, we had some good bullish gaps here that all got filled in as you can see you know most of them you know we had some ups and downs and got filled in but this one um, five percent gain to the upside I mean that's a good strong move there you know I I don't think you know there's a good chance that this one doesn't get filled in it actually turns into um, what's called a runaway gap when you're starting an intermediate run see all the rest of these have been filled in. Um, but this one doesn't look like it will. And it, and for us to get to break even, it would have to. Uh, so that's a nice good factor we have working in our favor there. In fact, if you look at the two-line version of the MACD and Stochastics um, chart, and you look up here, our break even is back below the 50-day move. So we'd have to essentially get back below the 50 and most likely below the 200 uh, for us to lose, uh, what, $420, which is what we're trying to make uh, here. Uh, with uh, this particular trade. All right, so that wraps us up for today. You've heard from me now. Now I want to hear from you. Use that link popping out in the top right corner of your screen that takes you to our Market Outlook forums. Open up any new thread with any questions or comments you have. Reply to anybody else's threads. And let's keep this conversation going in between videos. As always, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as our website at marketscholars.com. Uh, click that thumbs up icon. Like us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Comment on the video. Have a great rest of your Wednesday night, everybody, and we'll see you all next time.